Hello everyone, I'm Priya Shet and welcome to the Brands of New India Mega Summit. The first ever edition of the Bonnie Mega Summit is a platform where we hear directly from leaders, entrepreneurs and pioneers who are leading the transformation in the D2C landscape of the country. In this session, Scale and Solutions, we will talk about the recent growth of the Indian e-commerce brands and the factors supporting the growth. We will also deep dive into the role of key enablers such as logistical tech, supply chain management platforms using advanced tech solutions to help D2C brands scale their business. And to discuss this, we have with us a power Patch panel. Join me in welcoming Gaurav Mangla, who's the co-founder and CEO at Pika. We have Akash Gihani, who's the co-founder at Instamojo, Prabhupada Singh, who is the CEO founder at Bivakoof, Kapil Makira, the CEO of Unicommerce, and Shankar Prasad, who's the founder and CEO at Plum. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us today. You know, I want to begin with you, Gaurav. You've managed to build innovative products which are simple to use, but how important is it to build innovative and simple solutions for brands to scale their business overall? Thanks, Priya. So nice to meet all of you. Uh, hi, everyone. Yeah, it's actually, you know, we, all of us, you know, have been grinding for almost, you know, five, six years and I see a lot of faces, heard a lot about them. And this D2C ecosystem, we are not just enabling, we are growing it. And it is actually important for brands to learn, you know, where they are going wrong, how they can scale and, you know, they should not be limited to certain, uh, you know, product lines itself. So as Picker, uh, we did the grind of last mile, first mile ourselves and now we are scaling it via tech. So we try to provide, you know, a complete checkout solution, warehousing, shipping, and all those means like all of us are providing different, different things. So it's important for brands, you know, to set right expectations for their customers and, you know, then abide by those expectations as well. So looking forward to this journey and, you know, really nice to meet everyone. You know, Akash, I want to come to you now to talk a little bit about, um, you know, how you've been a key enabler in the D2C ecosystem. I want to understand how your company has helped power the growth of so many e-commerce brands out there. Uh, hey, thanks, thanks, Priya. So I think you know it's 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 been a challenge, right? I think you know for us, you know the way that we've been doing it, you know we it's been it's been almost a decade now, and I think uh, today this entire thing about D2C is like like this big buzzword, and of course it is it is coming into play. But, you know, we could see this happen many, many years earlier. Uh, what we could see that tomorrow internet is going to come in a big way, right? This is before WhatsApp was on everyone's phone, you know, before, you know, like before e-commerce was, was a big thing. So we could see that, you know, this is going to happen. And what is going to be needed is, you know, very simple solutions, which are going to help a whole lot of businesses in ad adopting the internet and growing their business with it. So I think when it comes to that, you know, from day one, our approach has, has been, you know, make something really simple, make something very affordable, something which can be used by everyone out there, right? I mean, the proverbial saying goes, you know, you have to make a product which is simple enough that your mother or grandmother uses. And we actually taken that to heart, right? It has to be that. Uh, today, what we're seeing is, you know, businesses from across the country, right? From, from practically every state of the country, you know, from like, you know, about 1500 cities plus, or, you know, cities and towns and every establishment out there. So we're seeing a whole lot of diversity, diversity in terms of, you know, kinds of businesses, kinds of folks who want to set up, who want to go online. So it's extremely critical that we make something which is, you know, very simple, very intu intuitive for them. And I think today where we are, I think it's just, just the early days in terms of you know, the, the D2C ecosystem, which Gaurav also spoke about, right? I think it's, it's going to take, it's going to take time. I think we're just seeing it mature. We're just seeing, you know, uh, so it's, it's going to take a long time. I think all of us, We'll have to put in a lot more effort over the next decade or so to, to make it big. Right. Uh, thanks so much uh, for that. Uh, you know, I want to come to you, Kapil. Um, you know, you've had so many of the leading names in the D2C space with technology solutions. What, according to you, are some of the key factors that help D2C brands really scale? Yeah, so I think, uh, as uh, Akash and Gaurav mentioned, I think there have been a lot of innovation in the D2C ecosystem. In terms of, we've seen a plethora of D2C brands being launched, being becoming household names and especially now thanks to Shark Tank India uh, we are hearing a lot of <laughs> success stories coming in it's uh, actually entrepreneurship becoming mainstream but ultimately it's very simple right for any brand or any business to grow there are three things you need one you need is the traffic so the factor that you have the right brand pull you invest in marketing get the traffic in on your website then you have factors or um, or elements on your website or the front end that the customer is facing that they're able to convert, that you are able to indulge them, nudge them to click the buy button. 
and there are solutions on fast checkout. Uh, I think uh, Picker is also working on something on those lines as well. And there are other players as well who are saying that we'll do a one-click checkout. We'll reduce the hurdles it takes to uh, press the checkout button. Finally, the space that we are in, which is a post-purchase experience, us uh, and uh, Picker again there, wherein uh, it is becoming increasingly important. We have seen because of a lot of money coming in, a lot of D2C brands have launched. And the space has become very, very competitive. And one of the factors besides your brand positioning, because of which you're able to pull the uh, consumers, one of the most important factors uh, that I've been mentioning in some of the other discussions as well is the post-purchase experience. Are you able to offer them a delivery which is less than a day? Now we are now we're hearing D2C brands talking number of hours, right? Are you able to first offer that as a promise? Second, are you able to adhere to that as a promise? Making sure that the right shipment is reaching, making sure that you're giving them full visibility of, so-called Amazon-like experience on your D2C uh, brand website. I think these are the three key elements. And again, as I said, it's very simple. It's purely about execution, how well each brand is able to execute on that. Some of the larger ones, both Mama Earth have been able to execute so well on all these three parameters. And some of the smaller ones are still learning that journey. And like Plum, obviously, Plum and Bayfoo are also classic examples of how they've been able to are, are in that journey of making uh, uh, and figuring out all these three parameters, right? And they are obviously inspiration on the smaller brands. But ultimately it's about finding that right niche for yourself. So you're able to get traffic, get them to have the buy button, finally give them the excellent post-purchase experience so that they are loyal and you don't burn a lot of money in making sure that you're having to acquire newer and newer customers when you can do repeat purchases with the same customer. Right, uh, interesting perspective out there. Uh, Prabhupada, I want to bring you in here to try to understand a little bit about the challenges uh, that the sector faces. Especially Specifically, we've been seeing so many D2C brands uh, come along. What are some of the key roadblocks that you think would perhaps uh, come the way for brands that's trying to be to build up and scale uh, uh, these times? Right. Um, so the challenges that I feel in this industry are ever evolving. So we started a D2C brand back in 2012-13. Uh, and obviously, the first challenge was the industry did not exist, both for consumers and the investors. Uh, around 2016-17, uh, I think the industry started existing and then the challenges uh, have been the one that the enablers in this industry have been trying to solve, um, be it enabling logistics to supply chain uh, to a, a platform like Shopify itself, where you don't have to build your own code. And uh, and, and these are like big uh, solutions that the industry have been given because when we solved this throughout 2012 to 15, 16, uh, doing everything in-house, solving everything on your own um, were pretty big challenges and the industry has come a long way. Um, but Going forward, uh, the challenge that I feel, I, I think uh, what has happened with all the enablers coming together, the entire ecosystem of e-commerce growing, the entire e D2C enablers uh, uh, evolving and serving them. Uh, what has happened in a true way, brand creation has been democratized. Uh, earlier, it was about a lot of uh, uh, money that goes into starting a brand. Uh, there were uh, multiple challenges you had to overcome from day one, uh, be it distribution, be it the manufacturing a lot of things you had to overcome. So uh, in true way, democratization has happened. And this is a great news uh, for all the uh, people looking to start brands or have started brands in the last few years. Uh, but then there is the curse of democratization where, where what will happen is that because it's so easy to start a brand relatively uh, as compared to before. Uh, and if you are doing it, uh, thousands like us and everyone is going to do it. Uh, so what will happen is the zero to one journey will become very easy. Everyone will be able to uh, focus on niche, find out, find out niche uh, uh, consumers. But the problem is earlier, if people are finding niche five years back, let's say in 2016, 17, and challenging the legacy players, uh, for anyone to copy, uh, no one lived in the industry. So you were doing something that the market did not have consensus on. So you ended up striking something uh, and hitting gold because market did not have consensus on it for a very long time. And, and then brands could scale beyond 200, 500, 1000 crores. But now what is happening is even within a niche, the moment you're spotting a niche and starting a brand focus on niche, you have 10 more players uh, which are now focusing uh, on, on the same niche audience. So what will happen is zero to one is happening um, very easily. Uh, people are getting a product market fit. One to 10 also teams which are executing fast, teams, teams which are executing good uh, are getting there. Uh, and But the journey from 10 to 100 and truly build large companies uh, that is going to be a big challenge for all the uh, D2C uh, brand owners. In terms of numbers, uh, let's say um, in uh, CPG or uh, food companies, uh, 100 core companies, there are going to be hundreds of it, but there'll be few disruptors, maybe five or seven, which will touch a thousand crores. In fashion also, 
uh, we are in somewhere in between that journey a lot of people will get to 100 crore 150 crore like we're at 300 right now but the journey to 1000 uh, crore uh, is going to take a lot so i think the, the, the curse of democratization is going to be the biggest challenge for building a large player and at the same time uh, the first leg of the journey has been simplified it has been made really easier if you are able to find the niche and really execute it well exec- uh, then i think the challenges are, are, are not many uh, then and, and that brings to me to another point i think what is happening because of this competition uh, to build a pure play d2c brand becomes even more challenging because if everyone is targeting the same consumer the same niche your customer acquisition costs are going to go up so that is going to be second uh, challenge this industry is going to see the third challenge uh, which is a wider challenge again uh, if you see all the poster boys of uh, the d2c uh, industry so far uh, no one has been able to build it either pure play d2c or let's say even staying online uh, most of them have successfully built an offline uh, business uh, so there also there was a first mover advantage the retailers were always open to new brands coming up because they were always squeezed by the large legacy players not giving them margins uh, the likes of unilevers will not end up giving more than 8 10 20% margin and the moment there were good brands out there with good product market fit going out to retailers and saying that we are okay giving you 15 20 25% margin there was uh, an acceptance by the retailer uh, but now again uh, the the curse of retail it, it's limited shelf space uh, so if there was space for 20 brands and there, there was dearth of brands and now it has moved up to 30 and 40 brands there might not be more space after that Uh, so if people are going to look at examples the previous ones which became successful even our strategy is going to have online plus offline then offline will also be uh, a challenge and as much as this industry is maturing but i think it has matured to certain extent the early more advantages are over uh, now someone will need really disruptive ideas really disruptive uh, execution uh, getting everything correct or maybe find new niche areas or new industries to crack for example uh, fashion uh, or let's say uh package good all a lot of these industries are seeing a lot of brands maybe the future of pharma might be created to see and then might go offline so maybe either you crack new industries uh, and and uh, build large business have early mover advantage in new kind of industries but most of the travel industries that we have been reading about i think they are in the in that stage of maturity where uh, half the journey is done uh, and the doors will close mm-hmm. very soon right uh, thanks for that subkiran now i want to come to you shankar uh, customer delight has been a very big part of your business uh, and you know what does it really take to have this kind of holistic customer experience any kind of partnerships that you've been working on uh, with other important uh, players in the e- ecosystem well as uh, prakran said there's no dearth of brands or choices for customers today so even the legacy brands are now in the dtc arena they're competing head on with you so all the sort of specialist advantages if any that were conferred on the early movers are gone so therefore the only way to grow and build is to continue to deliver customer delight at every touch point and people make a mistake when they think that customer delight starts after the person has bought something on your website or on your app uh, according to me it starts way earlier it starts from the very first social media post they see of you it starts from the way, the time they enter your website or your app uh, you know whether they read a blog post whether they see a video Uh, that entire user experience on the on the platform how well they are able to make the choice that they were uh, that they thought they were going to make when they entered the platform and all the way into sort of buying something and then the delivery experience as gorov and uh, kapil alluded to uh, even updates on delivery experience i've seen are a major source of pain point for people they want to know exactly where their you know packages uh, and so on uh, all the way into now we are talking about the actual product itself there's this so much of a road to travel before you get to the moment of truth of using the actual product uh, and in a in a category, category like beauty for example uh, it's a it's a slightly complex category to sort of peel the onion in the, in the consumer's mind it's it's not it's not straight forward that you just bung in anything into a bottle and that's going to work for people one has to have right from the time we think about the product to sort of the consumer throws the bottle away or sometimes even after throwing the bottle away we have to map the entire journey in the consumer's mind and the choice variables and keep designing product that continues to delight them so this entire process of you know all the way from awareness to consideration to purchase reuse recycle this, this entire journey one needs to identify what are those areas which are critical for the consumer what are those areas where i have the right to win 
as a brand not every brand can do everything well there are some brands which do certain things well so one has to be consistent across those across every experience let's say uh, that that the consumer has of the brand uh, and offer it and i think it's it's tempting for founders to run after today's sales or today's roas or this month sales or this month i i still do that it's not as if i don't but it's also important to identify where are those areas where we can offer better customer delight experience a uh, more delightful experience compared to the other brands that are playing in the in the space and i think that's what should keep founders awake at night it's not easy and it's 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 not static either it keeps evolving right it's not easy i know uh, it, it is huge and challenging out there i'm sure the audience with us uh, it really agrees with all the kind of opinions you've given um, gaurav i want to come to you to understand a little bit about how your experience has been with working with so many d2c brands yeah priya so i think like as prakiran and shankar mentioned uh, there are two kinds of journeys that you know we solve at picker first is this democratization journey enabling the 0 to 1 or 1 to 10 kind of a stage for anyone like who just things of doing anything in the d2c space and second is the journey of you know the customer satisfaction uh, you can say customer delight for brands who reach 10 to you know 100 kind of a journey because that is the key factor there so as you know ashankar mentioned you know touch point is not after years purchase touch point is whenever he interacts with the you know d2c brand whether it's social media or the website they check out uh, their add to cart or any any other communication through whatsapp email sms so we try to you know solve these two problems and the complexity is at like totally different and as shankar said the second one is more uh, difficult to you know solve so we try to build products you know first of all on the first problem to just you know enable anyone going online and on for that we try to provide them a faster checkout so that you know when a customer reaches to the checkout part he sees the right expectation then you know we try to deliver that expectation 90% of the times and how we can raise that number from 90 to 95 and then for the 10 to 100 kind of a journey for the customer delight part whatever we promise to brands we ensure that you know brands can promise the same to their end customers and when the customer uh, you know gets notified for real time notifications for weird visibility part and then on the return refund side as well if a customer is not happy with the product there should be a, a smooth return refund process to enable you know repeat purchases so you can't just grow by just doing facebook google marketing you need to have a repeat purchase channel as well so picker i would say like you know these two kinds of journey are two very important problems and you know we are doing good and hopefully we'll try to innovate more and more ours is a complete innovation journey not at all a financial kind of a journey and would love to you know contribute more and more to the ecosystem so like as you know every report says that you know sellers are growing by 20% cgr and this d2c gmv is growing by 50% cgr would love to contribute more and more from picker to the end of it right uh, thanks to that gorav uh, akash i want to come to you to understand what kind of uh, you know uh, with so much customer data out there technology uh, analytics tools out there how do you sort of use this to deliver a personalized customer experience i think uh, first of all data is something you know which is out there in plenty today right and and at times you know we get very carried away just thinking about you know, the kind of data that we have and a kind of things that you know we can be doing from it so i think one is just to you know maybe some throw some ca- throw some caution out there that yes uh, that data is great but only makes sense if you use it very wisely right but at the same time it's also very easy to get you know carried away in all sorts of experiments you know which are not you know let's say uh, which don't really make a lot of sense or sometimes uh, maybe at scale as well you just sometimes a brute force approach actually works out much better than you know trying to be very you know insightful and you know slicing the data in different ways but having said that there's a lot of things that we have seen right so so for example today uh, we have a lot of businesses who come up on insta mojo right and we always there, there are always some kind of trends that we see so uh, like you know there are a lot of businesses today uh, you know like new newer folks you know who are starting up new new d2c brands if i call them a lot of them coming up in the fashion and apparel space uh at the same time you know there, there is this you know a whole lot of them coming up into this beauty and you know gardening space as well now what we've seen is the way a person you know in the fashion space you know uh, interacts with the product the kind of time they take to you know get started basically the kind of time you know someone else takes right let's say a food retailer or someone else takes is very different now what that helps us do is create you know custom journeys for them and uh, like like so again right what we've seen is uh 
some of them you know there are certain features which they like there are others who don't you know like who prefer certain those features in the product so i think it's all about having that having that mindset in terms of you know how can i you know how can i take advantage of it how can i deliver a much more personalized uh, solution to them so at at the same time though you know like i said right, i like again throw caution to that sometimes you know it's very easy to get carried away by it but yes at one level it is it is very insightful the kind of things we see so like you know just the other day right and i was having a chat with one of our sales teams and they said you know what today uh, more than half of you know the sign up so you know the new businesses that we see are actually women entrepreneurs now that wasn't the case earlier and Out of curiosity, I just asked them. I didn't know so what is it good or is it not so good, right? I mean, just like in terms of how does it translate to business, and they were actually very happy because they felt talking to women entrepreneurs is uh, much much simpler, right? Because they are more open to sharing their journey. They are more of open about you know sharing their like you know kind of problems they are seeing. Uh, you know how can Instagram also help them, right? Visibly a male entrepreneur, right? Which is a little like there are a little more barriers in talking to them. So I think there are these certain things that we see coming out every now and then, and a lot of times. these are very surprising to me but yes it is about staying close to that uh, about making sense of all these you know different piece of data that we see right uh, thanks for that uh, akash i want to come to you a uh, couple to understand a little bit about what your perspective is when it comes to smaller d2c brands really competing with the amazons and flipkarts of the internet how do you see this revolution plan panning out sure uh, i think uh, definitely d2c uh, has been a big buzzword and For for a lot of folks in the ecosystem, D two C means just the website volume. But I think from our experience, what we've seen, whether a small or a big D two C brand, they don't essentially compete with Amazon and Flipkart per se. Amazon and Flipkart are just marketplaces, right? They are channels for customer acquisition. So most D two C brands that we've seen at scale, as we, as uh, Prabhupada mentioned, in zero to one, one to ten, or ten to hundred journey, many of them we've seen having a lot of dependence on marketplace. Uh, so uh, while like website volumes have grown, I think over the last uh, 20 months uh, post pandemic, we have seen website volumes growing three times that of the marketplaces. Although starting at a smaller base, and a lot of D2C brands actually growing in tier two, tier three cities where we are seeing consistently 100 percent plus growth. But in spite of that, I think a uh, lot of sellers that we speak to, or a lot of brands that we speak to, say that having traffic on marketplaces is a core part of their strategy. Their own website maybe. Uh, uh, a key factor for driving brand experience selling brand messaging but ultimately the volumes are coming from marketplaces so i think for brands and businesses they they are not viewing flipkart and amazon as competitions they are viewing them as a channel for uh, getting volumes and, and that's why uh, pk mentioned that the zero to one journey is very easy right it's very easy now to actually list on amazon and flipkart and start getting volumes do some proof of concepts and as as we're seeing a lot of competition coming in i think it's also important for a lot of entrepreneurs to kind of take a step back and think that's the dynamism of the indian entrepreneurial industry right you are being forced to actually figure out the right product market fit earlier you could be very broad based saying saying that i'm a cosmetics player or i'm i'm a personal care player but that doesn't work now you have to like have an enough level of detail in your niche for you to get the right product market fit and then obviously become a broad based player and that's how probably the earlier players also started their journey and so i think obviously the consumers today are very demanding and amazon and flipkarts of the world are very very easy sort of test beds to figure out what is that the customer wants uh because of which you don't have to invest a lot of money today and then once you are able to get the right product market fit you can obviously use your website to kind of uh, scale uh, or build further connect with your consumers that's the typical journey uh, that we have seen uh, entrepreneurs take in fact uh, because it is bit getting competitive we are also seeing a lot of roll up firms coming up like the likes of mensa brands global bees it's a great exit great platform for d2c brands to grow themselves right uh, obviously uh, it's not easy for founders to give up what they have built over these years but they also see it as a great platform to get economies of scale and even these roll up firms realize the importance of amazon and flipkart and the other marketplaces and that's why we are seeing now newer players becoming larger me show obviously heralding heralding a new sort of era in terms of reseller economy that's a new channel uh, so, social commerce based and we are now seeing newer such verticalized marketplaces coming up and all these roller firms also realize the important many in fact are focusing on marketplace first brands as well so that's why i think rather than viewing as competition all the ecosystem players at least view them as channels and hence i think they will coexist and the website as i mentioned will be for driving the brand messaging and 
the brand experience and the marketplaces will continue to drive experience and now there are many more beyond yeah, amazon and flipkart there is a jio there is misho there are so many more marketplaces that have come up mintra obviously as part of flipkart for, which are driving the volumes and uh, for the for the brand and are relevant for brands at different parts of their journey Sure. Uh, thanks for that, Kapil. Uh, valid points out there, uh, Prakash. And uh, I want to come to you now to talk a little bit about you know how important it is uh, when it comes to timely delivery of products because the role of logistic tech uh, platforms now are becoming even more important. And as Shankar was mentioning, people want to know where exactly their products are. uh when it comes to uh, timely delivery of their product so want to understand from your perspective are there is there any scope for improvement uh, for this entire logistics tech chain uh, in uh, the ecosystem at this point in time right um, i i think this ecosystem always has a challenge the challenge is always the scope of improvement will be customer delight and the problem <laughs> statement with customer delight it, it's always a moving needle uh, so the industry 10 years back began from a point where you ordered something and you get it was a big delight i, I think that was the lowest hanging fruit to be solved to people expecting it should come in the promised time that was the second challenge then the third challenge was transparency while it's coming i should always be able to track is it on time or not and that reduced uh, that minor anxiety for the customers i think we are beyond that also enablers and also the ecosystem has solved for that well today that customer delight lies in Uh, the lowest time possible uh, which could be down to few hours and 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 next day deliveries uh, so i think that's the scope and and that's where uh, people are working today uh, and i'm sure uh, the entire ecosystem will will get to um, that uh, benchmark as the default setting and and everyone will get there beyond that what will come even i don't know as i said it's a moving needle and a lot of things that are happening right now in the ecosystem uh, we never even felt they might be like really big consumer needs unless they have been done uh initially in this industry people used to mock next delivery to now everyone talking about how why it's important to uh, get it within few hours and 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 day and everyone wants to champion that uh, what will come next even i don't have an answer but to answer you is the scope the cus- the scope will always be a customer delight right uh, thanks for that prop kiran uh, shankar uh, you know what have been some of your uh, key learnings while scaling up because if an aspiring entrepreneur is listening to this session what would their takeaways be as we can also mention it it's a moving needle so we learn every day in fact each of these discussions that i am part of i always take away some things as learnings and go back and exchange with my team uh, so it's an it's an ongoing journey to continue to learn and scale but uh, if i were to synthesize the sort of my learnings at least uh, uh, in a few points i think the first thing is uh, sounds like a very simple thing to say an obvious thing to say but focus on customer delight uh i had i was bootstrapped for the first 5 years as a company and, you know i had a little note on the on the wall which is which used to say the best way to get funded is to sell more and uh, to sell more there is no other way other than to keep delighting your customer uh you can have glitzy ads or glitzy packaging getting you the customer once but to keep the customer you have to continue to delight them with your product so there is no you can never over emphasize the sort of importance of the right product market fit and sort of a focus on delighting the customer that's number one uh number two is focus on unit economics no matter how benign the funding environment how friendly the funding environment is uh, at the end of the day if your business is ha- at least has a visibility into good unit economics you may not be there today but you have a good visibility and a sort of rational way of getting there i think that's very important to have in sight uh and nike is a great example of 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 a company that was built very frugally in a ultra competitive space uh we are you know we we are brand partners to nike so we know how they been working over the years it's, it's incredible how that business has been built uh by focusing on the right unit unit economics and you know getting the numbers right from a profitability metrics point of view uh growth is important but i think profitability cannot lose sight of the third thing which i think as you go from the 10 to 100 will start mattering a lot 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 and it's mattering to us a lot now is people initially as a solo founder you are ninja you can do everything on your own you can code you can write you can drive you can put rubber passes yourself and we've all done that i think in our own ways and means of uh, you know scaling up and and that's the fun part of going from 0 to 1 and 1 to 10 but as you grow from 10 to 100 and beyond 
that's when the toughest part of getting people to align to the vision getting the right people on board who in turn then sort of cascade the vision down uh, making sure people see growth yet are challenged enough so those people questions are very highly complex to answer uh, and it takes up a lot of time but i think the least one can do as an entrepreneur at this stage is to set aside time for it uh, an entrepreneur who's sort of broken out of the let's say you a number 70 80 100 crore mark and does not have time for people i would be worried if that was the case because you are not going to be able to scale beyond that without right people in your team i think uh, the the phase of the journey determines how much time you spend on each of them but uh, it's it's approximately in their order get your customer and market product fit right uh, you know then get your unit economics right and then get the team and the people right uh, approximately in that order is what i would say sequence right uh, words of wisdom out there uh, thanks for that shankar uh, you know our come to closing comments so uh, from all of you to understand what do you think will be the one key factor that will power the d2c engine for the next phase of growth uh, what do you think would be that one thing or that one element uh, of primary importance and let's begin with you gaurav yeah so nps mainly you know how nps will shape up with this faster deliveries lot of buzz around this that you know how a shipment from delhi to bombay can be delivered in let's say less than 24 hours so i think this can be one of the a big needle moving factor and for us like it's a, like a moving away kind of a needle but you know how we can catch up fast with it right akash Uh, so i think all of us have touched upon the fact that you know how it's a great time to start because you know as enablers the entire ecosystem is there right today no matter what you want you want a website you want payments you want shipping everything is there right i think what is going to make a difference tomorrow is how will are you able to communicate right how how on you know on you know on point is your marketing you know is your branding i think that's going to be the big differentiator tomorrow and i think brands who are able to nail their storytelling or you know have are able to figure out the right way to reach their customers i think they're going to be you know staying in there for a much longer run right a couple yeah i think um, uh, while we all agree that there are a lot of ecosystem players that have come up and uh, like consumers even businesses have a lot of options today i think what will really differentiate it how uh, brands are able to integrate the different offerings together and have a seamless back end to be able to power the front end and offer a seamless experience to the customers I still see brands kind of struggling trying to fit all the pieces together. I think I think the next three to five years will be differentiator where can they have a robust backend and integrated robust backend to be able to offer a robust frontend to their customers. Okay, top kid on. Right, uh, the challenge that I uh, see and and that will become the key factor also, uh, and I think most D two C brand owners uh, and teams will be able to relate to, um, is that. Uh, everyone must must be feeling that all of us are on a continuous treadmill and that treadmill is of uh, fast changing trends fast changing consumer brands uh, let's say let's pick up example of beauty also if um, we saw some of the earlier companies picking a one ingredient and making it work for two decades also and being a market leader yet and still growing uh, is not happening anymore so it's a continuous uh, reinvention that needs to be done So the challenge that the brand um, uh, teams need to be created, uh, enablement, uh, starting business, running business is easier. Uh, but now our challenge is how to remain agile uh, at scale, how to continuously reinvent ourselves. If earlier reinventing was happening in one to two decades, once in a while, now the reinventing will happen once in five years, once in three years, and will be a continuous job to stay relevant, to stay, to make sure the product market fit never goes out of flavor for your brand. right staying relevant is important out there uh, shankar a final word from you uh to me the opportunity i see is uh, the gap between people who have access to internet and people who are shopping online uh that is still i think roughly about 40% i think it's about 600 million and 150 million depending on what kind of numbers so this gap of 450 million uh to me is a huge opportunity uh also the 150 million themselves transacting more frequently and uh, of higher order uh, and more categories online uh that this sort of bedrock of demand that is there uh in the in the country just intrinsically to me that's that's the biggest opportunity that i see across categories uh for brands to exploit it's not easy at the same time i think uh, it can happen anytime now it's just waiting to the gates are just waiting to open 
All right. Uh, okay. On that note, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us today on this very interesting panel. I think we've had a lot of interesting takeaways. Audience who's listening to us have also uh, maybe noted down all the important points that you all all have been making. So thank you so much for joining in and for your time for this insightful panel discussion. Thank you.